It's time for baseball's last frontier, Stories from the Bay Coast League, the podcast that will open your door to baseball's entry level, telling you the stories of the teams, players, and coaches of an independent minor league circuit. I'm your host, Bruce McClure, and I have the pleasure of introducing to you my friend, partner, and co-host, Evan Katz. Evan, how are we doing today? Uh, great, Bruce. I'm actually in Chicago. I think uh, listeners might recall I had to leave the Roswell Invaders about 10 days ago due to a family illness. So uh, uh, I'm co-hosting with you, but we're still working hard to bring the Pecos League to our listeners to really give people an idea of what goes on during the games and to prepare for the games. Well, you are actually in a, a bit of a better spot than I am right now. I'm up here hosting this from northern New England in the middle of New Hampshire, and we actually, believe it or not, have tornado warnings up. Well, in Chicago, it's a beautiful day today. In fact, we're, we live on uh, our apartment that we have here is on North Clark Street, and in a little while, fans will be streaming towards Wrigley Field, just about a mile up the road, the uh, Mets are facing the Cubs in tonight's nationally televised ESPN Sunday night baseball. Well, now I'm already and, jealous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this week, uh, what I was able to do uh, to share with our listeners some background with the Pecos League is I, I had the pleasure when I was in Roswell of staying with a host family, George and Patty Swenson, who've been doing this for many years. And I just want to give a little bit of background about the Swensons and how I crossed paths with them. And they became my host family for the two weeks that I was, was in Roswell. I went out uh, for a, a long weekend in April to uh, meet people, go to the field, get an understanding of Roswell and uh, the layout of the, the ballpark and meet some of the key people. And I, I'd, I'd reserved uh, an Airbnb like I normally do when I travel. And as uh, preparations began for the weekend, it got closer and closer. I got a very kind invitation. I think it was Patty got my email and sent me an email and, and asked me if I'd like to stay at their house. And, of course, having an opportunity to stay with someone connected with, uh, with the invaders and also save a little money seemed like a great idea. I was out, I think, for three nights uh, at the Swenson's home uh, in, in Roswell. And they've been involved with the invaders for many years, not just as host families, but handling all kinds of logistical uh, background for the invaders, problem solving, and uh, doing all sorts of emergency work just in time to keep the games going. <laughs> as it turns out, I had such a great time staying at their home, which they had used for, for host families for many years for the players. I asked them if it was possible to stay there when the season began. And I'll let them describe it a little bit later on, but they were, they were happy to have me uh, as their, their coach to be staying in, in, their, in their home for uh, the season. And that's where I stayed for two weeks. And uh, I just have to say that, that their experience as a host family made it so easy for me. You know, when you're a coach or you're a player, you're worrying about where you have to be someplace, when you have to be there. And the Swensons understood exactly about people's schedules and their personalities and their, their food preferences. And they made it really, really easy for me. So I just want to say thank you to, to Patty and George Swenson for their two great weeks of hospitality and, and to welcome them to uh, baseball's last frontier. Well, th thank you. We're glad to be here. Yes. We are so happy so to have you guys they, today. And the first thing I've got to ask you, because uh, Evan was so effusive in his praise for you guys, I'm just going to put it right out there. What kind of a house guest was Evan? You can tell us, no holds barred. Go ahead. Very quiet. <laughs> he was, uh, he, he uh, would come out for, for meals, and then he had so much preparation and work to do in in his room uh we were able to set up a table for him to put his computers and printers on and stuff and, uh, so for the first year or so after he moved in 
we didn't see much of him because he was so busy working on his computer, getting lineups and hunting up, hunting players and that kind of thing. Man, I was hoping for some but I want, stories there. Jeez. Oh. Well, I, I, I do want do want to point out, of course, that after a while, I, I did ask uh, what the procedure was to, to put out the trash. And I was able to work that into my schedule, taking the trash out whenever it was needed to the, the barrel on the other side of, of, of the house. And we were very grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But we have to remember that he was on a different time zone than we were. So he got up much earlier than we did. And mm -hmm. we turned him loose in the kitchen so mm -hmm. he could go ahead and do whatever he was cooking that he wanted to do because we were still in bed. Because mm -hmm. um, routine for uh, didn't work in with ours because we sleep late as retired people. <laughs> well, and we're on you know, I, universal, we, we were on universal baseball time, which yeah. means that the guys don't come in until 10 or 11 or even 12 o'clock at night. And won't their supper then? And they don't get up until 8 or 10 in the morning. So we call that universal baseball time. Let's talk a little bit about baseball for a second. Let's talk about Roswell. I understand that Roswell is a game out of the wild card. Give me, can you give me any ideas on how they're doing despite that nine and fourteen record so far? I'm sure you've been to several games. Tell me what it, what what you see out there. Well, we have a we have a new manager this year, yes. which. And for the last three years, we've had the same manager and kind of knew how what flow was going to go um, with and, and his routine of putting players in and how he did that sort of thing with his roster. This, uh, we're still learning from this new manager. How's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was that a nice way to put that? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. So, okay. And, and it's worth no, it's worth noting that the two teams in the division, the two two of the stronger teams, Alpine is twenty and one. Who I think Roswell is is facing for a couple of games uh, coming up today and tomorrow. And Tucson is fourteen and ten. They have really been dominating the uh, Mountain South division. And as a result, the teams that are battling for a while, the wild card spots have records under five hundred. That, that's so, let, let me let me just ask a, a question here to, to to George and Patty because one of the things that I said uh, when I left that I thought was really uh, made it easy for me and I'm sure easy made it easy for for players is that I found that you were really able to adjust your schedule. Also, you, you made sure you knew what people's food preferences were, and you also seemed to adjust well to people's personalities. Can you talk a little bit about it as a host family, uh, how you're able to uh, juggle those things, schedules, food preferences, and personalities to make your home a comfortable place so that the players can relax and, and, and get the things that they need? Well, we've been very fortunate in the fact that in the past, we've had all really fine young men stay with us. No really, pro no real problems. Um, they're, they're just fine in, young men and, and um, very easy to host. Uh, they've had, with any group of, of people, there have been have been problems with other host families and their we what we call summer sons, uh -huh. um, but we've been very fortunate that uh, we've all had really really nice people, including <laughs> Evan. Yes. <laughs> so how many how, how many years how many years have you been host families now? Well, we started no, in 14. Been, yeah, we It's been oh. 10 years. We, you know, the memories on your Facebook uh, page or your phone come up, and ours came up with uh, the first uh, player that we were 
host family to, and I sent it to him. He lives in California. He said he couldn't believe it's been 10 years ago because he was leaving to go home and I snapped a picture of him next to his car. So uh, we have a tendency to keep in contact with nearly all of the players that we've been host family to. So that's been fun to see them progress in baseball and in their lives and graduate college and get, get married get married and and their pictures of their kids it's it's been lots of fun we've enjoyed that part and i think george has is uh used to a different routine because he is a retired manager of the tower out here he's with the federal aviation and so he worked different hours that way. I'm a retired teacher. And so uh, I think all of that plays together with me picking out personalities and reading eyes. And <laughs> because as a teacher, I read eyes. And this last player that we had that's now down in Mexico with the major league there, he didn't speak very good English, but he and I could read each other by looking at at our eyes and he got a big kick out of that that I could un I knew when he understood what I was saying and didn't think French so that was fun. Well in fact well that that, that was Michael. Go ahead. And even yeah. and he every day he sends Patty something uh from yeah from the team yeah. Yeah and both he and and uh, Luis Luis call her abuela, which means mother in Spanish. So it it it's fun. We it's like we don't seem to lose the connection to most of them. They uh, they seem to keep in contact with us. So you mentioned you mentioned Michael Perez, who was there for while I was there, and Luis Moreno, but I think it's important. To tell the story that originally this year, if I, my memory serves me correctly, you weren't going to be hosting any players, and I was going to be the lower impact coach that was going to be the only uh, invader staying at your home. But uh, we had an emergency housing situation, and Michael Perez uh, from uh, Florida, Miami Dade Junior College, and Luis Perez, uh, Luis Moreno from the uh, formerly from the Atlanta Braves needed a place to stay for a couple of days. But I think it's uh, be good if you could tell people what happened when when you had to bring them in just for a couple of days on an emergency basis. Well, we weren't prepared for one thing. We had to uh, get the rooms ready, and we have a basement, but because they're from Florida they didn't like basements so one of them didn't want to stay down there so they both ended up in the front bedroom and uh, and they may do um and you're right when they called and said you know they were ready to take these two and put them someplace else we had already formed a bond with these with these two boys and weren't ready to give them up is that what you're talking about evan Exactly. In fact, I, I remember what happened was, you know, I'm not sure if it was the first day or the second day. Uh, I'm not sure what was happening, if they were having breakfast or we were talking oh. about them going away. And, and, and you asked me to go have a private conversation with George. You remember that yeah, conversation, I'm... George? No, George doesn't either. I can no. see him looking at his face. <laughs> oh, oh, so, 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 George, so George, George, Patty said, George wants to talk to you. And, and George pulls me into the laundry room, which oh, is off the kitchen. Yes. And he says, I, I can't remember your exact words, George, but you said, we don't want to give him up. We don't want him to go. No, we didn't. And, and you're right. That's right. Yeah. We had and, forgotten. And that's how, that's how they, the, emer the two night emergency uh, stay uh, turned into the whole summer, although Michael had to leave, but Luis is still there, correct? Yes, he is. Yes. 
and he's just a real fine young man. He's, uh, again, he calls Patty Abuela. He gives us a hug. When he gets up in the morning, he comes and finds us and gives us a hug, gives both of the dogs a pat. And then before he leaves to go to the field, he comes and finds us. He gives us another hug. And I, he does this routinely. I mean, even when he comes in at night, I'm probably already in bed. I have his supper fixed because he likes, I've never seen any boy eat as much pasta as this. As this. <laughs> I, I never, he piles it on the plate and eats a little tiny dab of meat in between there. So it's, I told him before he left us last time, I bought three huge bags of noodles so that I won't run out this time. Um, you know, I got I got to say here that that for our listeners out there who are looking for that door into baseball's entry level, they found it because this is stuff you don't hear as you read over a league's website or maybe tune in on on television or on the stream a game on the internet. You see the game, you see the uniforms, you see the you see what you see as baseball, professional baseball. And what you don't realize is that this is not the high paid positions that you're watching when you tune in a triple A game, let alone a, a major league game. These kids have host families, and as we've been talking here with George and Patty, we we see that they form these bonds over time that aren't breakable, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's why I've said repeatedly, baseball people are the best people, and there's three of them right here on this call. But I want to go to George for a minute, and I want to ask George about his baseball room. George, can you give me uh, a little bit on that? <laughs> oh, our baseball room. Yes. Yeah, well, that's the front, our front bedroom that is, that's really kind of turned into a memorabilia, baseball memorabilia uh, uh, area. Uh, with pictures? With pictures every every year um they have uh, our 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 photographer takes a picture of the players and their host families and then usually the players will um autograph the the uh, pictures and then put some sentiment down there about liked or didn't like about the, uh, <laughs> what they didn't like the, uh, season and we've been fortunate enough where where we haven't received too many negative comments well we've never received it no we haven't negative comments and, uh, but we've framed the pictures and they're hanging on the wall and it starts with the first one 10 years ago and then the boy, that boy got sent home I call them boys George says they're not but I Anyway, they sent that boy home. He got cut. And we got a telephone call from the coach at that time, the manager at that time. And he said, I have a new one coming in. I have no place to put him. Can he come to your house? And I said, you know, my husband's mad at you for sending AJ home. Uh, <laughs> you have to talk to him. And so George talked to him. And, and I guess they have. Anyway, we got another we got another six foot four boy uh, here at the house. So uh, anyway, those pictures are arranged that way in the which they can. We've even now spread over them to another wall. But George also has a collection of baseballs. Baseball. Go ahead. Baseballs from the different years and uh, that we posted. In fact, some of them go back to before we hosted. Uh, we also have balls from different teams in the Pecos League that are no more, like the Rio Doso Osos and Las Cruces. Uh, 
the yeah, Las Cruces. What what were they? I don't know. And the pupfish. <laughs> yeah, of course the pupfish, which uh, Evan knows about. He he pitched there at yep. in the El Alberto for the pupfish. Right, uh, that was twenty seventeen. Yeah, and then the, the last year, what was it? Fourteen twenty three. We won the fakes the yes. 22. Oh, yeah. know. And 22. we ended up getting ordering uh, the championship ring with the because we were general managers back then and and uh, so we started out hosting a family knowing nothing about baseball and me being mad when our <laughs> our summer our first guy was cut from the team. <laughs> Uh, we didn't know really how cruel sometimes baseball can be as far as you know they they when the when somebody has to be cut it it gets to be a kind of emotional thing because you 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 uh you, you get these bonds with these young men right you know and all of a sudden they're not there and, then, and it's like losing a child. And it's what Carson's size sixteen shoes. Yeah, he left Good those Lord. for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord, did you, George? Did you say you were GM of this team at one time? Did I hear you? Did I just hear you say that? Yeah. Yes, Patty and I have been general managers for I don't know five years. We we quit counting. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you I got to ask you to tell me a little bit about that experience and some of the things that you that you've done in that role. Well, it's just we work it's just everything that happens outside the fence. Huh. You take had, care of that we had to take care of from from um uh getting group nights and working with the city. Work yeah, working with the city which gets to be interesting at times. I'll bet. And, uh or when the when the lights won't come on or when the sprinkler system goes off when it's not in the middle of a game and uh there's just a minutia of things that have to happen before the game toilet paper (laughs) (laughs) bathrooms aren't clean how come oh yeah um it just yeah uh all of those things that, well, the other night, they forgot to turn the lights on, so they come to us, and we're supposed oh, to be Lord. retired from this job. Yeah. So, yes. How do you forget to turn the lights on for a night game? Yes. Well, and, the, the sun does it at, at game time, especially this time of year. It's, it's The game started at 630, and it's it's still fairly light out. And so uh, and there's no, you have to, it's, it's an old system. You got to go over there and, and flip three spring loaded old electrical service boxes that are pretty demanding. So it's not like going over and flipping a switch and they're locked up. The lights are locked up, of course. So it takes a little bit of uh, timing and foresight to get them going before it gets too dark. Well, and, well, and then making sure that the American flag is up before the games and and um, the boys have water and ice and uh, you know it it's just a minutia of little things yeah of of all these things that have to come together um before the first pitch is thrown you know who's going to throw out the first pitch who's going to sing the national anthem you know uh are we going to have a, a group night where where uh, a company will sponsor uh, that night, and uh, uh, which helps the the commissioner mm-hmm. put on these uh, baseball games? Baseball games. So there's it, it, just you know a whole lot of things that happen. And usually at the last moment, even though we do all the planning, we did all the planning starting in January, usually in January for the season. 
So what no, you're telling no, me here family. is that. I'm sorry. So what you're telling me here is is that being a the general manager in the Pecos League is not necessarily as glamorous as being the general manager of say the Kansas City Royals. And it doesn't pay well either. Oh, geez, come on. <laughs> we're volunteers. Yeah. It's just a good thing we're retired. Volunteers so, brought George, these I, needs. They really do. Evan, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to ask, and I, and I know that, that, that when I was there uh, for a couple of weeks, Patty and George have their spot where they sit right behind home plate but i thought you told me george in the last week or so you got you got drafted and and, and brought up to the press box am i, am, am I correct oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've uh yeah i i had the honor of of calling the game and or having the poor people listen to me sing take me out of the ball game <laughs> you're roswell's harry carey and it's just a good thing they didn't bring cabbage or tomatoes. <laughs> to throw ah. I can see you now go leaning out the, the press box window, a one, a two. Let's sing it. All right. I love it. Yeah. Well, he did. yeah, he did a good job. Do either. Uh, so so let me ask a question. Go. Okay. So let me ask you a question. This is this is this is somewhat baseball related, and I think that that some of some our earlier listeners might recall that the Roswell Invaders are named because of the spaceship that crashed in Roswell in 1947, where we were may not being invaded by by uh, aliens, but certainly visited by aliens. So the Roswell Invaders insignia is, of course, uh, a space alien. There's a lot of uh, tourism that's resulting from the uh, the spaceship landing in 1947. Around July 4th, there's a UFO festival. And I, I think, Patty, you told me a story that not too long ago, if the uh, invaders schedule matched up with the uh, UFO weekend, that, that the team would participate in some of the events at the UFO yes. festival. Am I correct? Yes, that's right. I, as general manager, I was <laughs> I was uh, attending meetings that had to do with the UFO festival, and they requested that the invaders have two games during the festival. So I, I had to contact the commissioner and line all that up. And yes, we've been part of the parade, and we uh, won what the crowd favorite, I think, is what it was called, because the ma we have a mascot that's. <laughs> looks like an alien and so Roz was there and yes it brought lots of attention to us and we had and Can people you... that were at the game we had people from Norway and we had people from Maine is that right anyway people that were actually attended the games were from uh yeah far away places so that was fun George Can you talk can you talk a little bit about the, the UFO parade that, that the invaders participate in or have participated in? I, you, talk, you want me to talk about the the fact that people make tinfoil hats and they teach you how to make these tinfoil hats so that you wear them so you are not beamed up. <laughs> and, and the invaders were in, were, in, were in the UFO parade. Isn't there a parade as part of UFO weekend? Yes, yes. We'll miss it this year because they're going to be right. out of town. But yes, the, we were in the parade, and uh, we we physically not, not me, not. no, the boys were. So that worked out good. So have either of you ever been beamed up, or do <laughs> you continue to make tinfoil hats every year? <laughs> we stay at home. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you've lined your roof with tinfoil. I see how this goes. Okay, that's great. Right. There you go. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> how are you feeling about Roswell for the rest of the year? What do you think is going to happen with this club? Oh, me. <laughs> we're, not, we're not sure. Uh, we evidently got 
uh, they were looking for another host family house mm -hmm. because I, when they come back from Alpine, we will have acquired another new player. Um, so I'm, uh, I know nothing about him. Um, we, can you tell I don't know? Okay. They, they are not, I might as well say it, I hate to say it over the air, but they are not, they don't seem to have come together and gelled and hmm. played together as a team. Is that right, Evan? Well, it's a bit, you know, we're about 40% of the way through the season. I think the two games against the Alpine this week are, are going to be telling. Alpine is 20 and 1. I think some people might recall that, that both Alpine and Tucson bring about 60 or 70 guys to spring training and have a very rigorous screening process, end up with really talented nice. teams. But if, if Roswell can hold up against Alpine and uh, and then do well in the following games against uh, Tucson and Trinidad, and uh, just stay close to 500, they'll, they'll have a good shot at, at, at earning a, a wild card spot. But yeah. in as, the play as we know in the Pecos yeah. League, anything anything can happen in the Pecos League. And, you're, and that is the thing. We've gotten in at the last minute a lot of times. So that, we hope for the best. How's that? Sounds like my entire career. Just yeah. <laughs> throw in the air and hope for the best. Uh, yeah. I think Oswell's in Alpine up. tonight, June 23rd, and tomorrow, June 24th, returning home to face the Tucson Segoras on the 25th at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And if you go out to the field and you play your cards right, you just might get the chance to meet George and Patty at the ballpark and – you just might get an autograph too. Who knows? Really, right? Yes, sure enough. <laughs> You've never turned yeah. down an autograph seeker before, have you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to toss it back to Evan for 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 the last licks. Evan, what do you got? Well, as I said, you know, Roswell's got those games coming up in North Platte, which won last night. Uh, it's got Garden City for three games on the road. Last week, we talked to. North Platte manager Todd Everleth, who put together an expansion team in North Platte, and uh, they've got two games uh, at home against Garden City. So hopefully they're 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 pulling together. Uh, the Mountain North, where, where, where they are, has got Garden City off to a great start. So both Roswell and North Platte, two of the teams we're following, have their work cut out to uh, to crawl back into wild card contention. Well, like we've said several times, anything can happen in the Pecos League. And if you want to keep track of all the action in this very fast-paced, unpredictable league, point your web browser to PecosLeague.com. And to watch all the action on your computer, you can stream it live at PecosLeague.tv. And finally, if you're a hardcore baseball fan, you need to join the Society for American Baseball Research, the premier baseball community offering an amazing baseball buffet of options to explore your fandom. Sabre boasts more than 35 different research committees, over 70 re regional chapters, and innumerable opportunities to connect with baseball minds across the world. For more information, go to sabre.org slash join today. This has been a fantastic discussion. I want to thank George and Patty for uh, jumping in uh, with us today. Folks, thanks a lot. We really do appreciate it. Well, you're more than welcome. Thanks Thank for inviting you. us. Oh, this has been fun. I really appreciate it. For Evan Katz, for George and Patty, I'm Bruce McClure. Thanks for listening, and we're going to see you next week.